Buckle up, this is going to be a long one. It's July of 2020, and COVID is in full effect across the U.S. Treatment regimens are varied and experimental. There are some promising studies around steroids, but we're literally at the point where we didn't fully understand how long the virus could live on a surface at this time. Thankfully, the PCR tests that have been used forever were adapted to being used for COVID testing at this time, and there are actually two different vari- uh, varieties. There's a longer uh, exposure time, but better accuracy test that is getting popular. But there's also these quick tests that take like 10 minutes from the time that you start the testing, uh, but they're down to like a 75, 85 accuracy rating at this point. So. Those are very much more popular, but not really the gold standard that you might want them to be. So you're in your car, AC is blasting to deal with the Florida heat. You're alternating between park and drive as the cars in front of you stop and move and stop and move and stop and move. All you really want is for this to be over with and Tomorrow, you'll know if you can visit your grandmother or not. Finally, after what seems like hours, you get to the front of the line and a doctor or nurse or just some employee who knows who this is just comes up to you and tells you to scan a QR code with your phone saying that you're going to have to fill out and submit the form that pops up. And that's going to give them everything they need to send you your test results once they're ready. It wants your address, oddly, It wants your social security number, that's weird. But it also wants your phone number, email, and name, which seem much more realistic and normal. Puzzled as to why those first couple items are needed, you start typing away and the person at your window, who you now notice isn't wearing a mask and doesn't have gloves or other protective equipment on, tells you the test is going to cost $70. Now despite every other fuck up, and we're gonna get into it, Trump made during the pandemic. He never, Biden made a bunch too, but he never made testing a pay-to-play service. It was subsidized by the government through local health care providers, and it was free to those who needed or wanted tests. There was an entire industry grift around it that I don't even know if I'll have time to get into, and I shouldn't have brought it up. But if you wanted a test, you could get one, and it wasn't going to cost you anything. You look further down the line at this point, and you notice that the person collecting the nasal swabs is not putting them into sealed containers to be tested. They're tossing them into the trash. It dawns on you that you may have just spent over an hour in line to get scammed. I go by Lazy Fire. Welcome to episode two of True Grift, COVID-19 Scammers. I'm shooting for 30-minute episodes, so this is, is based on the script I have Uh, It's going to be part one of two, most likely, because I do want to stop at a certain point. Uh, You know, cliffhangers, it's very popular with the kids. Uh, I just, I I also know that I found a bunch of interesting information that sticks into my brain. Uh, You saw it in the first episode where I'm going to just start going off script, and it's going to lead to segments where uh, I start just wandering. So I know that I just need to, I'm going to try to keep this on topic, but this topic itself is so expansive that even if I limited myself to just fake COVID tests, I would still be here for half an hour. The scenario I opened with is actually a composition of fake pop-up testing events that occurred all over the country. Uh, The main details are from a man who uh, goes by Dave, just a mononym, I guess, Uh, who called the authorities on a scam testing site in Florida in 2022. But as early as May of 2020, when testing was new, there were locations running essentially the same scheme reported across the country. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky had the earliest one I could find information on, and it was also one of the most expensive at $240 per test. A number of states and cities issued warnings on how to spot these fake testing sites and to only use that, those backed by local governments and legitimate healthcare providers. The thing is that at least a couple of these fake sites were promoted by local governments. People set up some very legitimate looking websites and things that looked like businesses that 
it was just so sophisticated that you would look at this and you would say, there's no way this is fake. The one in the Ford example had a full on website. It had, it was a functional thing instead of just being like a form that was just pulling data. It had, you know, here's our doctors, here's all this stuff. I just, man, uh, this just reminds me if we have another pandemic and we will, I mean, that's inevitable, but if we have another one, uh, stuff like this and AI generation is going to make everything hell. Oh boy. So from my own experience, here's how a normal COVID testing site should work. I went through one in, oh boy, July, around July 4th of 2021, because I wanted to go and see my family for 4th of July. I mean, we'd been tested, we'd been vaccinated by this point, we were good to go. Uh, but my wife had been exposed to somebody at work who had tested positive. And so we needed to get tested before we could go to the 4th of July. And then the next day was actually my uh, best friend's son's fourth birthday. And I hadn't seen the kid since his first birthday. So I was really excited to get to go to that. But we didn't get the test back in time. It really sucked. Anyways, took a sip there. You can probably hear it on, on mic. It's fine. The way this all works, though, is you go up, you fill out a paper form. It only asks you specific information, doesn't ask you for your social security number and all this other stuff. Now I, I, I take that back. They might ask for that information, but they might ask for your health insurance information and all this other stuff too. So, but they want a paper form and they email you your results with, within a day. But I knew exactly what this healthcare organization was because it's the hospital that I used that was running it. So I was good. Know who's running it, know that they're real, make sure they're not taking data that they don't need. That's really the best way to do it. But honestly, I don't think a lot of us uh, are in the position where you can really tell that all the time. And that's what made this really dangerous. It wasn't that these tests, they might have been, you know, real as, as anything else, but um, you got to watch everybody, make sure they're doing these things. Like the fact that you feel like you have to be vigilant to get tested for COVID is not great. Just don't love that. I never got a single additional email from the healthcare system either. So that was really great. I love that part. So that's, that's normal testing. It's just minimum information, get you in and out. You see them actually collect the samples and put them into uh, some form of sealed container for later testing. That's what you look for. At least in the 2020-22 era, um, I don't know how that looks today because uh, a lot of these subsidies and the, the funding that was used to make these things free, like the one I attended, uh, oh yeah, that's the big thing. They never ask you for money. Uh, but back then, they didn't. Today, they might. I don't know how that works now. I haven't had to do anything but at home tests uh, for the last like two years. So now that we're quote past COVID, things may have changed, like I said, but the over the counter tests that have, that I've mentioned have become like more or less the standard in the last few years. And that's made people think COVID isn't really still around. And those tests don't get reported and included in statistics, whereas these outside ones did. So, you know, then that's another thing you can do after the fact. Just don't pay anyone to give you, to get a COVID test. If they want your insurance information, maybe you're okay. I don't know. Anyways, my, my information is dated on this. My, my personal experiences are. So multiple local governments have issued warning, uh, warnings about COVID scams, uh, starting with tests, like I mentioned, and moving down the line to treatments, personal protective equipment, and even paid COVID tracking apps that just pocketed money from unsuspecting users. These reports often cite multiple Department of Justice or Center for Disease Control reports to warn people about common attempts to part them from their money under the guise of preventing, curing, or testing for COVID-19. The problem, and the reason this may go to a couple of episodes, is the fact that COVID denialists and the opportunists that preyed on the See, the word I have in the script is dumbest. 
most gullible most desperate i think is maybe a good it, there are people who were just not concerning you know not concerned with certain things there are people who were not able to really decipher what's happening and there are people who are just not curious so saying dumbest feels a little odd i might have to rewrite that if i record this again uh, but the they were preying on people who at one point it was so bad that at one point the fda had to state in a press release quote taking drugs meant for animals is dangerous as people were taking anti-parasite medication for sheep and horses as a prophylactic against covid and we'll talk more about that later i'm not going to stand here and tell you that there are easy answers for most of covid things we were literally watching the scientific method at work in real time and saw the first deployment of mRNA vaccines, uh, which only added to the pile of conspiracy theories that have already accumulated around the virus. I'm going to try and focus on just full on scams here. It's not that I'm afraid of the denialists or the anti-vaxxers are going to find me and get angry. It, it, they've likely turned this video off anyways. I, someone got tested for COVID and scandal. The idea is we want to look at the people who tried to profit off a global pandemic by performing grifts and such. That's what the show's about. Still coming for America's frontline doctors, though, because, my God, the grift machine on that on those two. The, the, I always say two. There's like eight of them, but the, I just think of the two people who kind of get the most attention. Anyways, if you want an idea how profitable some of these scams can be, Look no further than Mainstream Diagnostic Laboratory in Florida. Executive Rance, Brad, Rance Bradshaw pled guilty to a $3.2 million Medicare scheme at the end of 2023 based around the lab sending an undisclosed number of COVID tests to seniors in one of the Biden at-home test distribution efforts from 2022. The scam came in when Bradshaw paid $210,000 to a firm to gain access to a database containing a number of Medicare recipients' information. Bradshaw's company then sent out tests while billing Medicare, even if the targets didn't request or require a test. Similar cases were found in Alabama, North Carolina, and Missouri about the same time, and tried. Some of the tests sent out may have even been fake tests something the CDC warned about early on, uh, but they persisted for quite a while. Most of the fake tests that we're talking about simply didn't have FDA approval at some point, uh, but may have gained it later or may have been just fine and just didn't seek approval before getting out to the market. Uh, but rushing a product to market to cash in on a gap in availability for legit tests could have endangered an untold number of people. It wasn't just people using questionable case studies on medical intervention. It wasn't because people were doing completely fake tests that had no real value. It was people exploiting the pandemic to claim brand new powers for their favorite useless pseudo medicine that I find the most interesting. We're going to spend very little time on this, though. Chiropractic practitioners tended to be the worst. If you want to lump them in with uh, the homeopathic system that we talked about in episode one, that would be understandable but they use their fake medical knowledge, quote, medical knowledge, to provide a treatment option. Many of them did. This was not universal throughout chiropractic, uh, but there were a number of people who did come forward and say, hey, I can prevent or cure COVID by snapping your back in a specific manner. Uh, acupuncture and Reiki centers across the country and world made similar claims. They all kind of work on the same kind of balance of humors, centering yourself, opening chakras kind of stuff. So it makes sense that they would all lump themselves into this. Uh, some practitioners did end up getting charged with violating the COVID-19 consumer protection law that took effect in early 2021. Uh, this was a very necessary protection as people were selling all sorts of products as either prolactics or post-infection treatments for COVID. The first case brought forward under that law was against a St. Louis, Missouri chiropractor who sold zinc and vitamin D supplements, claiming they could cure or prevent people from uh, being affected with the virus. 
if you watch the previous episode, you remember I also brought up Alex Jones claiming a silver containing toothpaste he advertised could prevent you from getting COVID before this law went into effect. So uh, in this case, it fell on the AG of New York State to bring case uh, to cease, have him cease and desist from making these ads. Uh, that was back in 20, late 2020. Some of the most dangerous grift products became popular because President Trump couldn't shut his mouth. Famously, he suggested injections of a disinfectant and that might clear COVID. Now, we shouldn't take a, we should, I was going to say shouldn't, but we should take a second here and remember there was a question from a reporter after he made his more famous statement that clarified that he was not suggesting an injection of bleach, even though he had just moments before suggested that it was a possible treatment. I'm not doing a Trump voice. Don't worry. I'm not not going to torture you with that, but we, we should look at the word salad answers that he gave. The first statement was, and I'm going to butcher this because I, I can't follow his, his thinking. His thought process is just so broken. Uh, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or almost a cleaning? because you see it gets in the lungs and does a tremendous number on the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you, you're, you're gonna have to use medical doctors with, but it sounds interesting to me. I didn't edit any of that statement. I actually read every word slowly to make sure I didn't butcher it any more than it already was. But he very clearly says, he sounds like he wants people to inject bleach or have doctors do it. But later on, a one of the doctors who was on stage with him was asked a question by a reporter and was asked specifically are they suggesting exactly the words inject bleach are th are those real uh, a real thing you're looking at and trump came back with it wouldn't be through injections which hey if he'd stopped there and said i'm not telling people to drink bleach might have been okay but then he continued almost a cleansing and sterilization of an area. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work, but it certainly has a big effect on if it's a stationary object. The man's brain is completely fried. I, I really can't tell if he was saying, we'll disinfect surfaces, or if he's suggesting using bleach inside people in some way, because he seems to still think that that's an option by the end of that statement, right? He did not tell people to drink bleach though and that's often how this gets uh gets listed and he didn't tell people to inject it on their own huh. the damage was done after this though now this is gonna start to get to a weird place which everything did in covid uh but calls to the cdc poison control line were on the uptick since march well before trump made these statements the, the, those comments were made in april of, uh, of uh, 2020 april 23rd actually so late in the month that day and the next several states and cities did report a higher than usual number of cases of people calling for help after ingesting specifically bleach household cleaners and disinfectants now I can't say this was all Trump. That's impossible to state because it wasn't like everybody called up and said the president told me to drink bleach. So people were mixing cleaning products and getting themselves sick by accident for over a month at this point. Like I said, calls were on the uptick. They were up 20% over the same period the year before, even before Trump said anything. But there is likely a percentage of people baked into the post April 23rd numbers that we should probably say we're calling the CDC about their cleaning drinker cleaner drinking habits because it, that's just that they actually followed that idea they didn't hear the second answer and by Friday of that week Trump had come out and said he was quote being sarcastic so just it's always his answer it's always he's being sarcastic but 
I'm not here to do the political bitch job quite yet. We do have to talk about that in episode two, probably towards the tail end. So the thing is, before Trump issued his uh, I was being sarcastic thing, the people over at the Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing were partying on their podcast about Trump coming out and endorsing their miracle mineral solution. That's not really theirs. It's a generic solution, but they rely on selling it heavily. Um, see, it's industrial bleach diluted with citrus juice or some other acid like a vinegar or something like that. It's not It's not a medicine. It's literally bleach. MMS has, had been around for a while at that point, but Genesis 2, it was already nicknamed the Bleach Church before COVID, do their heavy promotion of MMS as a cure for everything from the common cold to AIDS and cancer. MMS has never been tested, never underwent any clinical trials, or had any evidence brought forward that it was a viable treatment for any disease because it's poison. You don't clinically test poison. By 2021, the father and his large adult sons who ran the church were under indictment for uh, you know, lying and endangering people. Uh, and their stockpile of bleach was seized due to their unyielding need to mail people stuff that could kill them. They'd actually been warned multiple times not to do this, and they just kept going. It was, it's almost pathologic. Less concerning than people drinking industrial cleaners, but just as not effective as bleach, was the idea ivermectin could cure or prevent COVID. This wasn't really a Trump thing. Uh, it just became popular with his audience due to a lot of factors. This is, we're running a little long, but I think it, we still have time to discuss this. Uh, and we'll get to the next topic in episode two. Ivermectin ties into a lot of different things. It goes all over the place and I just want to get kind of the basics out of the way before we go into the next episode. So let's let's do that. I'm going to going to try to stay on topic here. So let me explain the belief that ivermectin could cure covid and where that really came from. In the early days of the pandemic, it was found in lab testing that there was some antiviral effects to this antiparasitic drug when tested on extremely small samples. We're talking a couple of cells at a time. Uh, it found that single strand RNA replicating viruses would not send and not replicate if they were exposed to a high enough dose of ivermectin. The problem was that the comparative dose that would need to be given to a person was several times the safe allowable dose of the drug to the point where trials didn't move forward partially because the dose may have ended up being toxic. It could have shut down people's organs, killed them even. Uh, these studies aren't generally cited as the reason people started to believe ivermectin was a COVID treatment though. In late 2020, and this gets a little complex, there was a preprint study. If you're not aware, before you actually put something into a medical journal or a science journal, uh, it goes up for preprint. And that is where people who might want to comment on the validity of the data presented uh, or, uh, you know, take a look at everything, kind of a community review board, if you will. I'm simplifying this so much. That is not really what it is, but just think of it as asking for editing or uh, review by committee before something goes out into the world. Now, it started circulating all over the internet because a doctor at a hospital in Turkey had been giving doses of ivermectin to patients and noticed a statistically significant set of these patients avoided the worst of COVID symptoms and were less likely to die. This study was quickly withdrawn, however. It was after a British man found a number of anomalies and abnormalities. It, 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 for example, uh, the same patient data was being used under different identifiers. Uh, Non-randomized patient selection. Uh, I believe this study actually used dead people who had not received any treatments 
as examples of people who died because they didn't get ivermectin in this case. Um, there were even incorrectly calculated percentages and the study was not even done under the supervision of a local health board or anything like that. Just this was a shoddy study done by somebody who decided to go off the book. The retraction, like Trump stating he wasn't talking about injecting bleach, was not noticed by the people watching, though. Those skeptical of wearing masks or social distancing or those who thought that Big Pharma was just trying to make money off the pandemic, which, I mean, fair. Th these people saw ivermectin, a generic drug, as a treatment option they needed. And if the irregularities in the study were mentioned, they would just tell you that it was a conspiracy to suppress this miracle drug that's not going to make any money for, our, for Merrick and, and, you know, uh, Moderna. People were buying ivermectin at an unprecedented rate, if you recall. There were cases in the U.S. especially where they could not keep it on the shelf. People were, instead of buying human-graded stuff, buying paste meant for horses. Apparently the apple flavor was the best. They were buying buckets, gallons of the stuff meant for treating sheep on the outside. Both Alex Jones and Brett Weinstein injected it on air to prove it was safe and good. Alex Jones would then, I, I really don't like Alex Jones, as you can probably tell, uh, he would then go on to get COVID for a third time shortly after this, even though he just had taken ivermectin and said he does it every day. What made it a little bit more viable uh, to people and might have hooked some other people in is that the people who were coming across the border when they were uh, redirected and they were given medical treatment and everything like that, it was revealed that ivermectin is actually part of the treatment regimen that they were getting. And it was one of those wonderful moments in conspiracy theory history where you just get reminded that most of the people who think that they understand these things don't because ivermectin is an anti-parasitic drug the U.S. has a much lower rate of these sort of parasites being in people, but in poor countries that uh, people are coming from uh, over the southern border, these are not common drugs. There's more parasitic issues there, and so there are people who legitimately need this and will benefit from ivermectin. They've been getting it injected or uh, given to them in pill form for years before COVID, but people saw this happening and they realized, well, hey, that means that ivermectin must really work because they want the immigrants to come here and not, not have COVID, right? And it, once again, ties into a bunch of different conspiracy theories, but this is something that made people think this would, like obviously the ivermectin treatment is legit because they're not gonna let people into the country with COVID, so they're giving ivermectin to stop them from getting COVID. It's like, no, dude, no, that's, what they're doing is they're giving them ivermectin injections or pills because the parasitical rate is so much higher in the, the Southern Hemisphere that this is just a thing. Anyways, digressing. I went way off script there. So the most dangerous proponents of this ivermectin treatment and really in a lot of COVID treatments were a series of grifters who... Voltron style joined forces to create America's frontline doctors. And we'll start talking about them next time. Thanks for watching.